I can have you, you know, so you can be seated. I don't want to have you standing too long. I don't want to. But we're going to get into the word. The word is coming from the book of Proverbs. Chapter 3, verses 5 through 6. And I would like to give honor to my spiritual father, the right reverend, Dr. R. Fulton Hargo II. Yes. He is the reason why I stand here today. Our first lady, Sheila C. Hargrove. First lady, we honor you. Great leaders in this day and time. Hallelujah. And if you're involved in any organizations, you'll know that we have some great leaders here at the Cathedral Grace Family Church. To our Facebook family, to our YouTube family, and to our brothers and sisters in Christ, we honor you today, and we know that the Lord will speak to your heart on today. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 6. And it reads, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Let me read that again. Woo. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Somebody say all. all. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Hmm. Woo. In all your ways, didn't say some, it didn't say a few, it didn't say the church, it didn't say the family, it said in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. I'm going to read it in the Amplified also, I love the way the Amplified says it. It says, trust in and rely confidently on the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own insight or understanding. In all your ways, know and acknowledge and recognize him. Who are we talking about? We're talking about God. And he will make your path straight and smooth, check this out, removing obstacles that block your way. This is the word of the Lord. Our subject for today is trust the process. Trust the process. Spirit of the living God, we thank you, we honor you, and we praise you. We thank you because you are the true and living God that has all power in his hands. We thank you, Lord God, that you have revealed yourself to us through your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord God, that you have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you, we honor you, and we praise you for all that you're doing in our lives. And we understand that sometimes we may not understand the path that we take. We may not understand the path that we walk on. We may not understand the process that we're in. We may not understand what is going on all around us. But we know this. We know that the Bible teaches us that, that, that you will never leave us or forsake us. We know this, that the Bible says that you only want good things for your sons and daughters. We know this, that, that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. We know this, that we walk by faith and not by sight. And we understand this, that you are a spiritual God. And we understand that we have to, and we have to sometimes we have to, we have to fight a spiritual battle. And we understand that sometimes that battle is so raging, but we understand that we win in the end. The process is sometimes painful. The process is sometimes hard. But we understand, Lord God, because you are on our side, we win. We win. We win. No matter what the weapon is, we win. I thank you for every member here at the Cathedral Grace Family Church. I thank you, Lord God, that, we, that, that, that the next level is being birthed right now. I thank you, Lord God, that expanded capacity is being 
the earth right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you for process because we understand that process prepares. We understand that process promotes. We understand that process gets us ready. We understand that process doesn't always feel good, but it works together for our good. So we accept the process that you have us in. And we just say thank you, honor you, and praise you. We thank you that every mind is alert and every heart is receptive to receive the seed of the word of God. The word of God is quick and powerful. The word of God is spiritual. The word of God will go forth and accomplish what it is sent forth to do in each and every one of your children's lives. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. Trust in the process. Sometimes we understand that life will do what it does. Sometimes we may not understand how life is lifing in our lives. And sometimes we expect to be a little bit further than we think we should be. Sometimes we think we should be on another level than where we are. But if we understand our God, we understand he is the God who will not take you to the next level until he has proven that you will be successful on that level. Our God that we serve is a God that is a God who will try us. He will test us because he understands that on the next level, it might be a level that we may not be, a be ready for and it may be a level that could do more harm to us than good. So God will take us through a process to get us ready to be all that he created us to be and to do what he called us to do. The word trust defined is resting in the ability, reliability, strength, or power of someone or something. I'll say it again. Trust is defined as resting in the ability, reliability, strength, or power of someone or something. Our God is the most powerful being in the world, in this world. Our God has proven himself to be reliable. Our God has proven himself to be full of strength and power. So it should be easy for us to trust in the Lord with all of our heart. But sometimes it is not that easy. And the reason why it's not that easy, because we have to understand that man is a tripartite being. Man is spirit. That's that part of us that's like God. He possesses a soul. That's our will, our emotions, our mind, our intellect, our conscience. But he also lives in a body. The body is the vehicle that helps us interact with the world. The body is the vehicle that we're most used to functioning through. The body is what we're most used to using. If we pray on a daily basis, if we are studying the word, if we are, are reaching out to be closer to God, we will grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and we will become closer and more connected with God. But if we are functioning through our body more, then we will interact through our body even more. So why are you saying this? The Bible teaches us that we should not walk by what we see. It says that we should walk by faith and not by sight. But if your body is ruling, then you will walk by sight and not by faith. 
The scripture said, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Now, there are many things that we can put our trust in. We can put our trust in people. We can put our trust in our jobs. We can put our trust in our friends. And there are people that we should trust in. We should trust in our spouses. We should trust in a person that we went into business with. We should trust those that we labor with in the body of Christ. But there is a priority of trust that we should have that is foundation to any other trust that we have with any other person or any other thing. And that is our trust in God. I love what the Bible said. It says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. What I love about that, that word heart is, is the word lab. And I love what that, what the, what the, when the Bible explains it, it Bible will, will teach us and explain itself to us. So if the Bible is saying that, that the, with the word of God and God wants us to trust in the Lord with all of our heart, then we understand that we can trust in, we can trust in the Lord and not be trusting with all of our heart. So then we must understand what is, in this particular scripture, what is the heart? So we understand that the heart in this particular scripture is talking about our mind. It's talking about our emotions. It's talking about our will. It's talking about our conscience. So how does that, how does that, how does that, how does that, what does that mean to us? So when we're talking about our will, we're talking about our will to do or not to do. It's what we want to do. If we will to do it, we will do it. So what are you talking about? Okay, emotions. Emotions are, are, are the foundation of our actions. Our emotions help us to um, demonstrate, to, to, uh, to uh, display our actions. In our mind, of course, we understand is, is where thinking takes place. So the Bible is that in our conscience is our deep-seated belief system. So everything that we're taking in, in our mind, eventually will go to our conscience, which is our deep-seated belief system. So what the scripture is saying here, that, that I, I, I just don't want you to, to will and, and to will to trust in the Lord, but I want your, your mind and your thoughts to be trusting in the Lord. I want even your actions and your emotions to be trusting in the Lord. And when you have all of those things lined up, then you are trusting in the Lord with all of your heart. We often talk about integrity and how important integrity is. Here in this scripture, we see the foundation of integrity. It says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. What I love about this word trust is it means to lean. It means to lean on. It means to lean on as a support. And what I love about that is that's what we should be doing when we are in the body of Christ. That's what we should be doing as children of the Most High God. We should be leaning on the Lord. There should be nothing and no one that should shake us up so much that we don't believe the great God of heaven. If you trust in the Lord, you believe that he is reliable. If you trust in the Lord, you believe that he is trustworthy. If you trust in the Lord, you believe that he will do what he said he would do. So what does that mean? That means anything that I see in my life that's not going the way that I think that it should, but God told me otherwise, I'm going to believe God and I'm not going to believe the situation because I understand that one word from the Lord can turn that situation around. If you believe it, say trust the process. Trusting in the Lord gets us through the pain of the process. Trusting in the Lord gets us through the pain of the process. A lot of times what we try to do is we get we are faced with the situation. We are faced with the situation. We are faced with the circumstance. The first thing we do is try to figure it out. We try to figure it out. How am I going to get out of this? What am I going to do? Instead of acknowledging God. Father, you are the true and living God. You have all power in your hand. 
You see this situation that I'm going through. I know that you have good credit. I know what you can do. I've seen you deliver, deliver Daniel from the lion's den. I've seen you deliver the three Hebrew boys from the fire. I've seen you part the Red Sea. I know that you can take care of this situation. And Lord, I just say thank you for taking care of my situation. Lord, I just say thank you for doing it once again. I know that you are powerful. I trust in you. I trust in you with all my heart. I'm jumping up and down right now because I trust in you. I, I, I'm, I'm a screaming hallelujah because I trust in you. I'm, I'm, I'm screaming yay man because I trust in you. Because I trust in you. I'm just giving you all of my emotions. I'm giving you all of my praise. I'm giving you all of my mind. The only thing I'm thinking about right now is you because I trust you. The only thing I'm thinking about. The Bible says you will never leave me or forsake me. The only thing I'm thinking about right right now is that you are encamped around me and about me and I know that this situation that I face is not strong enough to deal with you so I just say thank you Lord thank you Lord for taking care of this situation thank you Lord for moving this mountain out of my way thank you Lord because you have never failed me before and you won't fail me now thank you Lord because I trust this process Hallelujah. We have to trust the process. Because in this life, we are going to go through trials and tribulations. But none of those come to kill us. It comes to make us better. We have to trust the process. The Bible says that in, in Psalms 20 and 7, it says, Some trust in chariots. And some in horses, but we will remember the name of our Lord. You know what that scripture means? That some people trust in what they see. They trust in the things that they see. They trust in the facts that they see. But they don't know that we serve a God who does miracles. We serve a God that, that, will, that will turn science upside down. We serve a God who can walk through walls. We serve a God that can turn water into wine. We serve a God that can take a dead body and say, rise, rise, and the dead body gets up and comes back to life. We serve a powerful God. How many people know that God will take care of whatever situation you're in? It doesn't matter if it's a situation of faith. It doesn't matter if it's a situation in your family. It doesn't matter if it's a situation in your finances. God will take care of it. Yes, he will. If we trust the process. Hallelujah. So the scripture says, the scripture says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Now scholarship teaches us, it says trust in the Lord with all your heart. So we understand that all means that it's, there are different parts. So we understand will is a part of our heart. A person chooses to do or not to do. We understand emotions, which are an expression of our behavior. We understand that the mind is a part of our heart, which is our thoughts. So I can will to trust, but then in my mind, I'm worrying. I'm not trusting in the Lord with all my heart. I can fake it till I make it. And I can come in. Get my dance on. You know, get my dance on. But if I'm worrying once I'm done praising and thanking God for what he's already done, I'm not trusting the Lord with all my heart. The other thing I think we get confused is we work for God. God does not work for us. 
God is a God of process. If we look at the life of David, check this out, great man of God in the Bible. Um, the Bible is very authentic, and it tells us everything about his life. We understand he made mistakes and stuff like that. But what we understand that David was anointed to be king. He was anointed to be king at a certain age. I believe it was 17. But he didn't become king until he was 30. There was a 13-year process. In the 13 years, he could have given up, caved in, and quit. All of the stuff that David went through, he could have said, this, all of this stuff, I got to go through this. The king is trying to kill me. My son is turned to get, all of this stuff, I'm going to, this, this must not be for me. I must not going to be king. But he trusted in the Lord with all of his heart. When we look at the life of Joseph and we see how Joseph had a gift. Joseph was a dreamer, and he had a gift. And that dream got him into some trouble with his brothers. And he was thrown into, we know the story, he was thrown into the pit. He was put in the prison when he, would, when he was falsely accused for trying to be with Potiphar's wife. And ultimately, he made it to the palace. But the time between him having that dream and the time between him becoming the prince of Egypt, there were about 15 years between that time. So why are you telling me this, Elder? The reason why I'm telling you this is because I believe that we here in the Cathedral Grace Family Church and those under the sound of my voice are, re are ready to move to the next level. I believe that God is expanding our capacity. And how many people know? I know if you're looking with your eyes and you're looking with your natural self, you're not going to see him because you have to see this in the spirit. You don't know how my God works. You don't know the process that my God will work through. How many people know that when Gideon was about to fight with 30,000, he ended up with 300 because there were too many people on his team. And guess what? Guess what? Because God knew that the, that the men who fought would take the glory he had to dwindle them down to 300 now how many y'all know that God will do great things here in the Cathedral Grace Family Church and those that listen in on the Cathedral Grace Family Church broadcast I tell you today that God is up to something God is expanding our capacity God is ready to move us to the next level I believe it I believe it with everything that's in me that God is ready to move us but we we have to trust the process now I can't tell you how much time it's gonna take but I can tell you this if you don't give up if you don't cave in if you don't quit you will reach your expected end I'm trusting the process because I understand my God I understand that as a child of God God has my back I understand as a child of God I am victorious I understand as a child of God that weeping may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning we must walk by faith and not by sight you can't go by what you see because if you go by what you see you're going to miss it if you go by what you see you're going to miss it each and every time our God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth our God is moving on our behalf he's moving right now on our behalf do you believe it do you trust it do you believe it if you believe it shout hallelujah the second part of that scripture says lean not unto your own understanding lean not unto your own understanding now God has blessed us with a mind that he wants us to use he wants us to use our mind but we remember man is a tripartite being the spirit is the pilot the spirit is supposed to lead the spirit now our mind is in our soul soul part of our tripartite okay 
It says, lean not on your own understanding. So I'm looking and I'm seeing what's happening. I'm looking at the pieces and I'm seeing what's going on. And I'm speculating, because you don't know, I'm speculating in my mind what is going on. And God is saying, don't speculate in your mind what is going on. Lean not on your own understanding. You're saying that one plus one is two when one plus one may not be, according to some new science that's coming out. <laughs> one times one, I'm sorry. According to some new science that's coming out, see? So lean not unto your own understanding. And what I love is uh, 1 Corinthians says it like this. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. We see through a glass dimly. Anybody that tells you that they know everything about God and they know everything that God is doing, they're not telling the truth. For we know in part. So God is telling us to lean not in our own understanding. But he's given us his word so we know what our God can do. He wants us to, to not lean on our own understanding or what we have speculated or what we have come up with by what we see. But he wants us to get with him and in the spirit realm see what is happening, see what is coming, see what is going on. He wants us to see in the spirit realm. What I love about David and Joseph, they knew that God was doing something with them, but they could not see the full process. God knew, but they did not know. And what happens sometimes when you can't see the full process, people give up, people cave in, and people quit. People leave because they can't see the process. They let situations, they let circumstances, they let questions, they let, they let these things take them off focus and get them out of position. When God was about to take you so far that you wouldn't, it would blow your mind. But you, but you quit. You gave up. You left too early. You should have held on. You should have stayed. God, in the scripture, we see God's process. He will show you the end result. You may not know everything about it. He showed Joseph that his brothers would bow down to him. But at that point, he didn't know that he would save the entire nation of Israel. God will show us the end result, but he doesn't always show us what will happen through the process. We must trust the process. And here's how we do it. This is how we do it. This is how we trust the process. If you believe in God, raise your hand. If you believe that God is true and living, raise your hand. If you believe that God can do anything, raise your hand. You believe what God can do can't be done, raise your hand. I believe all of that too. So this is what we have to do. This, the other part of that, that, second, that other verse 6 says, in all your ways, here is the strategy. Here is the strategy. Here is the strategy. In all your ways, acknowledge him. In all of our ways, acknowledge him. In all of our, what does this mean? It means I understand God is in control even when it does not look like it. God is in control even when it does not look like it. So I understand that God is always with me. I understand that God is always by my side. I understand that God will never leave me or forsake me. 
I understand that because God is with me, it doesn't matter if I'm in a lion's den. It doesn't matter if I'm in a burning, fiery furnace. It doesn't matter if I'm behind in my rent. It doesn't matter if, I'm, if I can't pay the mortgage. It doesn't matter if I lost my job. It doesn't matter because I serve a God that, that owns a cattle on a thousand hills. I serve a God that owns all the gold, that owns all the diamonds, that owns all the metals that are in the earth, that owns everything. I serve a God that can take care of me as a matter of fact the bible calls him jehovah jireh because he's a provider i serve a god that will provide for me he never seen his children begging for bread come on our god is an awesome god if you believe it shout hallelujah in the good god is there and even when we think it's not going well god is there God is there. He's working some things out in us. Everything that God that we go through, God does not let it just happen just to happen, but God will turn it around for our good. Sometimes it's just things that we need to grow in. Sometimes it's just things that we need to shift and we need to change. And once we line up with God, we will see things begin to move forward. Once we line up with God, we will see things begin to expand in our lives. We will see things begin to grow in our lives. We will see things Things begin to, to begin to flourish in our life but sometimes it's because of us as individuals we're not in line with what God wants us to do we worried about what God can do for us when we need to be worried about what can I do for God our God is the God when I'm in a valley and he's the God when I'm in a mountain God is always there and how many how many see God is always there. Do you believe that? And God is always speaking. Now, Bishop says it like this. He says, he gives us an example of AM and FM, the radio. You know, God is speaking. You know, you got to be, if he's speaking F in the F, you got to be tuned to an FM to hear the FM. But I'm going to say it like this. God is always there. And God is always speaking, but the question is, are you able to perceive what he's saying? He's always speaking. The question is, are we perceiving? If we're clouded with all of this stuff in our mind, if we're clouded with all of this stuff that we're looking at in, our, you know, in the natural, we're not going to be able to perceive what God is saying. And lastly... And he shall direct our paths. When we use the strategy of acknowledging God in all of our ways. And I can give you some practical examples. The practical examples is I'm, I'm, I'm going, I, give, I use myself as an example. But I'm going to a job where I know that there's going to be a challenge. And as I'm waking up, I say, Lord, I thank you for waking me up this morning. I thank you for starting me on my way. Lord, I understand that, that, that I have a challenge ahead of me at work. But I know that I serve a God who, who told me and teaches me that the weapons of my warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Lord, I thank you that as I'm driving my car, I see the strongholds coming down. I see all of that spiritual stuff that, that is not like you coming down. Lord, I thank you, Lord God, that even before I get there, my ministering angels that excel in strength, that hearken unto the voice of your word, that do battle in the spirit, I thank you that they're on a fight for me. I thank you, Lord, that you're making things work together for my good. Even before I step through the doorway, I thank you, Lord God, that you're just making a way out of no way. I thank you, Lord God, you're making the demons behave. I thank you, Lord God, that any and everything that shall try to come against me, it has to bow down in the name of Jesus. 
that's how we do it that's how we acknowledge him in all our ways and he shall direct our paths he will tell us okay you normally go through the front door I want you to go through the side door when you go through the side door I want you to go to this office and tell this person to do this thing once you do that I want you to go into your office and I want you to just think about me think about how I'm going to move in the day think about how I'm going to shape your day think about how I'm going to fight for you because the Lord says I will fight your battles vengeance is mine saith the Lord you don't have to fight just go sit down and I'm going to fight this for you but I want you to see in the spirit see how I'm going to make it happen see how I'm going to move the obstacles out of your way see how I'm going to do it see it see it in the spirit and I love that when we acknowledge God he's going to direct our path he will tell us where to go he will tell us when to stop he will tell us not to move he will tell us to sit down he will tell us to stand up I love the Lord when you acknowledge him Lord what shall I do I don't know what to do right now what shall I say I don't know what to say right now he'll say say this he'll say do that that's how it works when we acknowledge him he will direct our paths so you might say elder how can we do that it's not because of anything that I have done but it's because of what Jesus has done for each and every one of us Jesus suffered Jesus bled and Jesus died for the remission of our sins and because I'm in right standing with the Lord I have this authority I have this power I have this purpose how many y'all know that the Bible says that God worked up for six days and on the seventh day he rested why did he rest because he made Adam how many y'all know when Jesus ascended on high they said he gave power he gave gifts to men and now he sitting at the right hand of the father how can he sit because he gave it to his sons and daughters in the Lord trust in the process if you trust in the process give him a break hallelujah trust in the process hallelujah my time is up and I thank you for yours hallelujah 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 it's all right to praise him yeah Woo! hey Woo! Sometimes you got to give them a praise.